this other little section that says insert query. Um, queries, what we define as queries are when we have questions either for the type setter um, that we're, you know, is going to receive this word file or internal queries to somebody else who's going to look at this file or author queries, which are queries directed towards the author. Let's say an editor is looking at something and something is confusing and it's not really clear what the author uh, meant rather than take this sort of hardline approach to editing with Scribe. Uh, tends to do is we tend to just ask and say, hey, you know, we think this is what this means, but before changing this, you know, what do you mean here? Um, make this clear. Or sometimes we just say, hey, we have no idea what you're saying here. Uh, rather than touch this here, please, you know, recast for clarity and whatnot. Um, and so you'll see here that it gives you four different options. I discussed three of them just now. Author queries are AQ. Um, IQ are internal queries and TN are typesetter notes. So it's things specific like, hey, you know, this table needs to be, you know, at the top of this page or at the top or after this, you would include that in there. Um, usually things are, are clear to, to the typesetter. Um, you know, Tim can attest to that, but it's always good to have for when things need to be treated a special way or something that can't be exactly demonstrated and where it needs to be addressed, it's good to have that in the manuscript so that the typesetter does not miss that um, later on. And then the last um, query is the image callouts, which is what Tim discussed earlier, where, we're, where images in a Word file in, in the scribe um, well-formed document workflow are not maintained in the Word file. They're actually pulled out and replaced with a callout. What we've done is that here under insert query, we're able um, to uh, click on this IM button for image query or, or image callout, better said, um, and it will instantly add the image callout and style it as it needs to be styled, which is usually fig with the IM character style. Um, and I'll show you how each of these work um, in a moment. So. Right now, let's say I'm looking, I'll go down to some actual text, and I see that this is all italic for some reason. And let's say as I'm reading through it, I'm looking, looking at um, this, I'll say, hey, look, this looks like a letter to me, but you know, let's say the author didn't sort of really express himself correctly or, or in a way that's clear, I would say, okay, rather than going here and changing things or doing things that I don't need to do, right, I'd go over here to where it says insert query, I would hit a Q and then I would get this dialog box here where I could insert the query. And then if you have like queries that you often, um, um, if you have text that you um, often use, um, words auto text feature sort of gets imported here and you'll see that you have, you know, things. So here I'll often use my initials when, when adding something um, to, um, as a reference to something else. Um, but um, for your intents and purposes, what you'll look at is this side of the dialog box and you'll see um, that you can say AU, this is just standard scribe format, but we can, um, you know, you can do as you need to do. I'll say AU, indicating that this is addressed to the author. It, it does seem like a redundancy because it's already an author query. Um, but uh, we like to have that in there just to make sure that the author knows that that is for them because oftentimes you're working with an author who is unfamiliar with either words comment features or something like that. So this just sort of just helps. It's a redundancy that helps us catch um, an error. So um, we'll say AU for author and say this looks like a letter. Is this so? And then you go here and say add query note. And what you'll see is that word will add this query, it'll, it'll be marked as AQ1, and then it'll actually add the text of it as a comment. So that means that if uh, you add your queries through the SAI um, and you send this to an author who does not have the SAI, they'll still be able to view this as a comment. So it's not like they need the SAI to view your queries. That sort of makes that, that's the reason for that. And you can edit your note, your queries as you see fit. Um, here you have two options to move between previous and next queries. We only have one, so that's why we get this um, dialog box that says, hey, you know, I searched to the beginning and I didn't find anything. Would you like me to search uh, from the end? We're gonna say no, just for our purposes here. You can delete the query from here as well. And let's say you need to make an edit. Let's say you phrase this in a way that seems kind of harsh or something and you say like, um, you know, I'll say, please make clear, right? At that point, rather than add another query, which would just duplicate this, you would just hit edit query 
and so that the same process is what you'll do for uh, internal queries which again here you'll just see that it says this is an internal query let's say we want to add something here we're going to go in here and say internal query and just leave the default in there and notice how it's a different color because um, it's actually being treated as a different reviewer in Word um, and this is serves a purpose uh, which I will show as soon as we're done with this uh, little section here and let's say I want to insert a typesetter note here I'll do the same I have a dual screen setup so if you see like the, the thing sort of rising from the bottom that's why uh, but on a single screen it'll just pop up where it needs to pop up um, so we'll just add this here and so you'll have author query internal query and typesetter note and let me just show you quickly an image call out an image call out We'll come in and let's say it'll ask you to put in the figure file name we have a naming system and again this is also in the guidelines um, that's up there on the module we suggest that people follow at least some form of strict naming convention because that makes sure that files stay organized as you move down um, down the pipeline because um, if your files are just named like you know manuscript one manuscript two and then somebody else sends you a manuscript one then you can see where the confusion will arise and especially when you're dealing with multiple files from multiple different authors you want to make sure that your files are organized in a way and we have this also on the guidelines and we'll discuss more about that when we're talking about project management um, but that is available to you um, again they are guidelines they're not something that we are imposing on you and it's not like we're gonna say hey we can't help you because you didn't name this file correctly we won't we won't do that all right so let's say we'll call this SCR OTN image and say fig 01 right and it's a JPEG so dot JPEG we go in here and we say okay and it automatically notice how it it didn't come in um, st uh, composed um, like words normal uh, paragraph it actually came in um, in this nice bright red that's actually um, a character style um, you can see up here on the top left where it says the character style IMG and I'll show you if you don't have that um, that little dialog box on Word I'll show you how to uh, how to get that later um, later today so um, that um, as I said before um, there is a reason why for example the author queries the internal queries and the types that are notes are treated as different reviewers let's say you have you're going over um, as a project manager you're going over the edits before you send it to the author because you just want to take a good look and you want to say okay I want to make sure um, that I look at all the internal queries right and I don't want any other distractions so I'm able to at this moment go up here and turn off show a Q and show TN and I will only see the internal queries and then that way I can go through using words comment feature and of course we don't have more than one uh, but here you would be able to just jump through all the internal queries without having to also address author queries things that there may be too many of uh, and you don't really need to look at um, so that gives you a little bit of flexibility in this case so and if you want to see them all of course you can turn them all if you only want to see type center notes you can only do that you can do whatever combination um, is um, necessary and that covers what you know the SAI does uh, when it comes to editorial again like I said you know editorial needs a human eye uh, for it you know the machines haven't beat us yet there so um, at this point um, what what the SAI does is just sort of give us the, these options so that we can edit in a little better way um, and so moving away from that we're moving down to this user options section and there's really uh, two sections that we're just gonna two um, options that we're gonna focus on the view readme just sort of says like the information about the uh, the SAI you're welcome to you know once you install it to peruse this and and look at certain things it gives you actually even gives you the installation procedures and therefore further um, options and it gives you a nice little link to go to the documentation um, when you need to go to to that so let me just go back here so that's the readme and the send feedback actually directs you to our site so that you can give us feedback about the SAI or request any kind of features or anything like that um, but the, the ones that we really want to focus on are the user settings um, again this is where you would let's say you moved your template uh, because you moved stuff around on your computer you, when you when you do that you want to go back into the SAI and go to the SCML template and point it to the correct one because again a machine can only do what it 
you know, it's programmed to do and it will do it correctly, even if you tell it to do the wrong thing. So it'll do the wrong thing correctly 100% of the time. So if you are, if you don't have this pointed to the right template, it will apply um, whatever template it's pointed to. That may seem like it's like an oversight, but it's actually um, a feature. Let's say you have your own template, like la later on as we develop, you are able to develop your own sort of flavor of SCML um, way down the line, right? Um, and you want to apply that template, you can actually browse this, browse um, in your um, computer and point to the template um, that you need to apply. Um, so um, this gives you that little bit of uh, flexibility. You also have this option to open up a word style pane right at the startup whenever um, you use a launch word. Normally we have this off so because you don't want word to be opening up things um, like right off the bat um, because sometimes that causes slowdown. But if your computer can handle it, um, it is a nifty feature to have. And as I discussed before, the uh, editorial preferences here, after um, we have the, the editorial preferences here, you can select right certain, um, certain styles so that the rules that are applied with these editorial tools are based upon those styles. And again, you can create your own uh, capitalization dictionaries um, so that word doesn't marking things as misspelled all the time. And then the, the last big feature is this set keyboard shortcuts. So set keyboard shortcuts um, actually is just pointing you to Word. So in this um, so once we get into the customized keyboard, this button, all it actually does is actually um, directs you to Word's built-in uh, shortcut feature. It's just that it's a little bit onerous to get there um, without. So in the SAI, we just included this as an option uh, for people. And you can set your own shortcuts and you can pretty much assign a shortcut to anything, any, anything above this um, this little dotted line you see here are uh, words like standard uh, menu options. So for example, if you go to file, uh, like the file tab, you have different, you know, file close and you can assign a shortcut to closing your file and so on and so forth. And anything below this little uh, line, you'll have um, macros, uh, fonts, building blocks, and things that are very specific to Word. If you want to add a feature of the SAI to a shortcut, you normally have to go into macros and scroll down to where you see S, um, SAI, and you see this add to style sheet, which is one that we were just discussing during the editorial um, a portion of the SAI. If you look at this, you can click here and then you can press a new shortcut key. Um, I'm actually not gonna set this because then it'll save to my machine, but let's say I want that to be Alt-J. So I'll hit Alt-J on my keyboard. Um, it'll say down here if that is currently assigned. Um, there are some things like, for example, Control-S that will already be assigned to saved, uh, Control-C to copy and so on and so forth. And you can feel free to change those um, as best you work in Word. And then once you see this that is unassigned or you want to replace it, you just go ahead and hit assign. And then now every time, actually, I'm just going to go ahead and do this because I can then remove it. Um, now the SAI add to style sheet option um, is assigned to Alt J. And so now I'm going to close out of this and take the word uh, chant here and then just hit Alt J on my keyboard and then hop over to my style sheet. And if I go down to C, you'll see chant has been added there without me having to right click or anything like that. Um, and you can set up your keyboard shortcuts as you like. That's the reason that it's there. Um, oftentimes keyboard shortcuts are a lot faster than just going through and, and selecting using your mouse. Um, although some people prefer to use their mouse. So it's Again, optional, not something that you have to do. We do recommend that you, you know, set certain common tasks to shortcuts and you'll find that you'll actually end up saving time, um, a lot of time in the end.